Clockwork Orange, amongst all the films I've seen, is the most unique. A film that literally, structurally, tells itself again in a reflective manner um, throughout the second half of the film, particularly at the end of the second act and the beginning of the third. Cinematographically, it is beyond anything I've ever seen with these wide angle shots, um, especially throughout the action scenes and the, the violence, um, these wide angle shots on people's faces and these these kind of panins on people's faces when, you know, all the violence and the sexual assault is being, you know, witnessed and is being done in a certain way. Um, the colors kind of spring and there's there's certain editing choices, uh, particularly in one scene when he's, when Alex is in a, a woman's house and he's beating her and there's this one shot of the painting is um, kind of panned in as he's hitting this woman, uh, which I think is particularly just so, such an interesting contrast to the actual story, showing these colorful images when the film is really dark in tone and in theme. Um, also, it's a, in, particularly in this, the prison scenes and at the very beginning with, with this alleyway, the uh, symmetry is, is outstanding and the perspective and point of views are particularly just shockingly just look so good in the way the shadows are pointed out and um, the way everything is just kind of perfectly lined up um, like in the prison when they're walking there walking around a circle and when Alex is in prison it's perfectly kind of symmetrically uh, shot and there was a later there's a shot later on when they're all in like a line and Alex is the first one closer to the camera the perspective of that is just so satisfying to watch and it's it's so different from uh, cinema cinematography that we uh, we have today where most things are over the shoulder and there's not much symmetrical um, pleasure to it really which I which is one of my favorite things about Stanley Kubrick is the way he just so meticulously sets up all these different shots and it's him that's doing it it's not the cinematographer which I really appreciate because there's not that many directors who have a vision for a certain shot and a certain way of setting up the shot that um, Stanley Kubrick does so it's been known that um, some of the best movies by Stanley Kubrick are like The Shining, 2001 A Space Odyssey, um, all those films, and I feel like A Clockwork Orange doesn't get as much of the popularity, and but does get all pretty much all of the controversy when it comes to the themes and the, the way it's kind of presented with its violence and its, its sexual assault, but in in a sense, that's there for a reason, unlike a lot of kind of grindhouse films that are kind of from like the 70s that are set up in a way that you, you know, it's like shock you, you're like, oh my god, did that actually happen? It's more of a presentation of what's happening, as opposed to, look at this, isn't this gory, isn't this terrifying, oh my god. Um, yeah, and most casual viewers and most people who don't really watch, you know, meaningful films that have a deeper meaning to them and reflect on themselves, think of it this way. And that's what I think is kind of, um, this, this movie's kind of seen as, is this big, terrible juggernaut that's like, you know, you should never watch because it's terrible, it's terrifying, it's like so violent when it's, that's the point of the film, you know, is to reflect on that. That's why they do it, to reflect reflect on it. You can't make a point about something unless you show what you're talking about. Uh, but, yeah, uh, really people need to kind of look through a lens of film that's not particularly like 
say, seeing something that's bad and being like, that's bad, you can't watch that. They need to sort of take put it in perspective of the whole entire film and how the film was made, where like people just think, oh, that person probably made the film because they love violence, when it's exactly the opposite of the case, because Stanley Kubrick, <laughs> it's very well known, and most of his movies are quite... Um, they're slow and they they don't they don't show every single punch every single you know axe hit or every single you know gunshot they they're very slow especially with Barry Lyndon uh, it's probably the slowest Kubrick film not really in a bad way but it has this certain story pacing to it that doesn't exactly offer violence which is a, which is a contrast to this film unlike it's dystopian film counterparts, the film doesn't exactly focus mainly on this part of the product or this part of the experience. In fact, it's not even really mentioned, uh, this apocalyptic type world that, that the characters are living in. This sort of destroyed version of um, Britain, which has been overcome by crime and cruelty and in which the police aren't exactly even a real threat or even something that can protect the protagonist's victims. Not only that, it fits so well into the commentary of the film in which it suggests that in the future, which you'd assume it would be, the streets will be destroyed and will be filled with crime and killing and rape, which is essentially the message of the film that in the future and in, you know, that violence will take over everything and rape will take over everything and that it, it takes over society. Unlike many apocalyptic films, it doesn't, like I said, focus exactly entirely on its background, which is the dystopian type apocalyptic world. It sort of presents itself as, look, it's a dystopian world. So what? Now let's get on with the story, which I, I think is really good because many films they're infatuated with their own their own world, which doesn't need to be a thing, uh, because the world is a character of the film, but it doesn't exactly need to be told in every beat of the of the background. In contrast with this dark world, we're offered with costume design that's so bright and colorful in contrast. Just like this dark world in contrast, the classical music is more like upbeat, as if the character is going through something fun. It's as if it's mocking the viewer by saying, uh, this violence and this terrible, these terrible acts are funny and, you know, something to laugh at, which is exactly what the characters think. So it's sort of putting it through the exact perspective of the characters in that way going through the primitive uh, needs and wants of people and sort of connecting with that as we we connect with Alex in certain ways. We, we do feel like we need to let out violence sometimes maybe, but he's also instilled on uh, violence himself and he's used as a, as a project, as a hamster almost. This helps make us feel bad for him even though he's doing these terrible things. The bright oranges and the whites of Alex and his droog's clothes, it offers a certain tang to the world. In contrast to the production design, especially in the milk bar, um, the, the language uh, sort of is presented in a way that comically contrasts all these things um, in its dark theme. I really think that people need to watch this film because, you know what, why am I speaking so lowly? I think people need to watch this film because it's, it's a way of looking at violence in another reflective manner through its score, its costume design and everything. In conclusion, I give this film a 10 out of 10 as it's one of my favorite films ever. It's probably my favorite film of all time. Um, yeah, uh, I'll be doing other reviews soon, hopefully.
Um, I'm going to try and make it more uh, upbeat and sort of parody the film at the beginning with an intro. But apart from that, I'm going to recommend two films that's, that I like these films. Usually I would do that, but there's, there, are no, there are no films like, like it. There are no films like this film. So here are two, maybe they'll be here, I don't know, videos um, you guys can watch on my channel. Yeah, I'm just starting out doing these reviews and I'm having fun. So see you guys later. Hope you enjoy. Oh look, a beautiful view. I didn't see that there, boys. I really didn't.